Welcome back to another edition of Litter Media Live, a special edition talking about the League of Women Voters and their candidates night. An opportunity to visit with Bart Hinshaw. Thank you so much for stopping in today. Thank you. Uh, coming up in just a moment, we'll learn more right after this from Classic Brands. If you can give true love to me, I'll understand. Just it's only worth it if you enjoy you it. Can. Nicolope Ultra. The Candidates' Night is coming up on Tuesday, October 3rd at the Ross County Service Center, and the doors will open up at 6 o'clock or 6.30? 6.30. We're going to ask the candidates to come at 6. All right. And, of course, at 7 o'clock, that's when it all starts. The ball is rolling. Um, We jump into the general election in November, so this is to help everyone to learn about the candidates. We'll be looking at national... Um, no, this is uh, a, an off-year election. All right, and so all like, local. These are going to be city candidates. Now, okay. we're doing a program, Vote 411, and for the first time, it will be available for local candidates. It's always been a part of the information for state and national, but we bought into Vote 411 for local candidates. So we will have Candidates Night next Tuesday, then there will be additional information about the candidates on vote411.org. And we're live streaming next Tuesday. So a lot of ways to get to see your candidates. So uh, don't worry about not being able to get in and find a seat. Well, because but please come. The, you do want to have an audience <laughs> sure. in that regard. But um, it's nice to have the streaming side because right. now you can reach anybody anywhere they and, are. Absolutely. And there are a lot of people that are interested in these local races I'm really proud of the Chillicothe population. I think almost every race in for the city council and mayor, uh, president of council, they're all contested. I think there's one ward that isn't contested. Otherwise, there's, there's a competition in every race. Mm-hmm. And that's good. Yeah. You, of course, were a city council I person was. at one point in time. Um, what was that experience like? Uh, a lot of people always wonder why you want to go into public service. You took that step, and you've learned from it. Oh, my goodness. Um, If you have ever been curious why council does what they do, why they take so long, why they can't make a decision, you really have to either attend council on a regular basis or be on council. Council is a legislative body, and passing legislation is a lot different than sitting around the dinner table and saying, tomorrow we're going to whatever. It is a long process, and it requires public input. It requires uh, writing legislation and then passing legislation. I learned vocabulary. I learned how many different things that departments do. I had to learn the appropriate circumference of a um, sewage pipe. (laughs) Uh, you, You have to know a little bit about everything. And the appropriate uh, addressing of one another, respectively uh, throwing, you know, Mr. Mayor or whatever the case may be. Absolutely. And and timely. You know, thank you for bringing that up because one of the things that I appreciated in running for council, you may or may not have a party assignment. Many people ran as independents. Uh, But once we were elected, those party names just dropped. You know, we, I remember working together with many people who didn't have the same party background that I did. It, it just was for Chillicothe at that point and not about party. So It, it truly makes a difference, doesn't it? Oh, my it? goodness. It, yeah. And w- if they say all politics are local, that's the way it should be. Yeah. Party yeah. affiliation is not the major issue. And that's one thing that I think uh, people need to understand about the League of Women Voters. Same, same mm-hmm. line. Now, there are things you will endorse and so on and so forth, and many of the members are activists in some fashion, mm-hmm. but down the line, it is straight through. It absolutely. We are nonpartisan, which means we never endorse one candidate or another. We will endorse issues if that issue has been studied by the state or national league. And for example, uh, people will say, oh, you're partisan, you support redistricting. Redistricting has been around since the 1950s. Mm -hmm. It is an equal opportunity abuse by both Democrats and Republicans. (laughs) And yes, we support fair districts, and we have through Democratic 
uh, administrations and Republican administrations. So we're not supporting that because of one party or the other. Um, it's because that issue is important to us. Mm-hmm. And fair is fair. Yeah, absolutely. It's what everyone Supposedly. Wants, wants to have, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, this year we have uh, the mayoral candidates uh, who will be uh, participating. Uh, city council seats are, yes. are up for grabs. Um, will there be any issues or anything like that discussed on candidates night? The issues that are on the ballot for November, which would be the enshrinement of the abortion issue into the Constitution and the legalization of marijuana, um, those issues, were, we will say that they are going to be on the ballot. We, League has not taken a position on either of those issues. Mm-hmm. And so we will have, there's a pro and con on vote 411 on those issues. Um, but that won't really be a part of our candidates' night. Okay. It's going to be mostly for about candidates. Okay. And, and for those who want to uh, be in the audience, uh, they'll need to make sure you get their doors open at 630, mm-hmm. get seated, they'll drop the gavel at 7, mm-hmm. and get things up and running. Um, there will be rules of uh, decorum, so to speak, mm-hmm. I would imagine. You can't wear any kind of campaign information. You can't bring a logo of a candidate into that room. The candidates will have a space outside the venue where they can put signs and um, walking pieces, anything they want. But once you come through those doors, it, you can't have anything that advertises the candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, and we will also, not this year, take questions from the audience. We will have a panel that is going to ask questions. If someone in the listening community wants to submit a question either to our Facebook page or to our website, um, they can submit a question now this week, and we will put those, we'll give those to our questioning panel, and uh, so they may be included. And, and there's no gotcha questions. Oh, no. Uh, that, that, that's something oh, no. that I think every candidate is afraid of, 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 course. of seeing, but you're upfront about this. So you right. want to make sure that everyone is, is understanding. It's about issues. You know, yeah. what is your, each candidate will have 90 seconds to, I call it their elevator speech to say why they think that they are the best person to be elected to that position and what their vision for their ward or their uh, for the community might be. And then there will be two or three questions from the, the panel. Mm-hmm. This is the format we have used for 72 of the 75 <laughs> years we've done this. Last year we did a, uh, a much more informal we had fewer candidates. There were about, I think, eight or nine candidates, and we did a format that the candidates rotated from one table to the other. Mm-hmm. And that worked great, but we knew with 21 candidates that we couldn't use that format. That's a long night. That's a long night. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this, I, I'm trying to remember the last time, and, and maybe it has, but in recent memory I can't recall, when we've had three candidates up for the mayoral position. Correct. Uh, you've got the Democratic candidate and mm-hmm. Feeney, the existing manager, uh, mayor. Uh, then you also have Julie Preston on the Republican side and Jade Berry, who's running as an independent. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think that's great. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm sure that each candidate wishes that one or more of the others <laughs> would not be in the race because it would be easier. But no, I think that it gives everybody an opportunity to make a strong statement why they think they have the experience and the best, um, the best qualities to do that job. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, we mentioned about streaming uh, being done, so there is a live stream of this. Right. Uh, where can people find that stream? Uh, that will be on our public Facebook page, which is League of Women Voters, colon, Chillicothe, dash, Ross County. And so if you go to that Facebook page, we have two Facebook pages. One's private, just for league members, and the other one's public. It's real easy because one has 54 members and the other one has 500 and some members. <laughs> so you want to be on that one. Yeah, the distinction there. Uh, we will tell you that in this post we have it linked, the, the public uh, okay, Facebook page. Helps. So right. you can click right on that and it will take you right to it. And then like the page. That way you've got it ready to go. I, I don't think about that. <laughs> You, you can tell I'm so much not that media person. <laughs> <laughs> We're still learning. But it I, doesn't, I know, yeah. I know. And, I, you know, I, and we were talking a little bit before we started, and learning. One of the things I love about League is that every year I learn new things. Every year 
I have to either mentally or technologically up my game. We did uh, a lot of um, online meetings during COVID, and now we use them when when need be, but we love being together. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of new members, and so anyone who's interested in being a member of LEAD, um, join that Facebook page, and our member person, our member chair will connect with you. Um, And we just have fun. You know, we've got... Activities going on, podcasts. We participate, of course, in voter registration. We just did four voter registration events last week and had really good response on that. Um, So getting voters involved is is sometimes tricky, but the the, I don't like our current political atmosphere because it's there's so much rancor Mm -hmm. in it. But people are paying attention, and that's that's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. paying attention, but sometimes it can be seen <laughs> as being closed-minded and not open-minded to, to thought on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, for those folks who are going through life and they say, "My vote just doesn't matter," you're completely wrong. You are completely. You wrong. you, you mm-hmm. do mm-hmm. have the opportunity to make a difference. I, you know, as I said, even the diameter of your sewer pipes make a difference. <laughs> And uh, if almost everything in life, like it or not, is based on a political decision. And so if you don't like the policies that you see out there, those are all based on political decisions that have been made at the local or the state or national level. And a lot of times people will say, well, I don't like this, therefore I think we ought to just vote them all out and start over again. Well, that would be chaos because it really takes a year or two or more to learn the vocabulary and to learn, you know, how things work. Look at the state of Ohio. You remember when we did not have term limits in Ohio? Mm -hmm. And everybody thought term limits would solve the issue of political gamesmanship in Ohio. Well, that didn't work. And all it has done is it shortened the window that you're available. Right. And then everything has to move quicker and faster. And, and candidates can go from one house to another house and back to the first. So yeah. it, what I think the only thing that improves the political system is people paying attention, not listening to their neighbor, their spouse, but going and getting good information. And there is good information out there. And again, I'll say vote411.org. Um, get good information, and make a decision on your own. Yeah. There's nothing like going to the voting booth and suddenly coming across an issue that maybe you didn't read up mm-hmm. on, and you see all of that verbiage that's there that, to read through, and you're like, huh, I just want to get out of here. And we make snap decisions, mm-hmm. or we base it basically on what, what my mom said or my dad said, you know, that kind of thing, or someone around me. We have to educate ourselves before we get to that point to make the decision. And a good example is an issue that will be on the November ballot, and that is the issue that people think of as an abortion issue, but it is much broader than that. The language you'll have in front of you really concentrates on that word abortion, but that's not what you're voting on. You may think that's what you're voting on, but the actual language you're voting on is going to be hanging on the wall uh, in the polling place. Mm -hmm. And that is the petition that was signed back in May or June. And that includes um, all reproductive care. It includes miscarriages. It includes contraceptives. Those words were taken out of the ballot language, which people will say, how can they do that? I'm like, "Mm, it's just because they wanted to. Mm -hmm. But you do have to look beyond just, you know, what, What's going to be on the ballot, but do the research before you ever go into that booth. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Pre- do your prep- preparation work. I mean, if you're going to paint a wall, you got to prepare to paint that wall. Yes, yes, <laughs> or else it'll peel. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and you, if you want the results, uh, you know, you, you have to go through with that. Right. Uh, is there anything that we have missed here you wanted to mention? Mm-hmm. Um, I think we pretty much covered, I, I will once again say all candidates have been invited Not every candidate has chosen to participate, but we've had excellent response from both parties and independent candidates. So um, I think that everyone needs to know that if they come to Candidates Night next Tuesday, 
that they will have an opportunity to meet most of the candidates. Yeah. And better make an informed decision that right. way by right. hearing them. Well, and part of that informed decision is who shows up. Right. It's a two-way street, isn't it? it? Is. <laughs> <laughs> right. Certainly. The Chillicothe Ross League Women of League of Women Voters again their uh, Meet the Candidates night that is coming up on Tuesday, October 3rd, and uh, everything starts at 7. Get in place after 6:30. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Bart Hinshaw. I'm Dan Ramey. Thanks for watching another edition of Litter Media Live.